Good evening. <clears throat> this is Monday, June 19th, 2017, and this is a regularly scheduled unknown Board of Selectmen meeting. We're down one member today who uh, got called to work a few minutes ago on a, an emergency call, so it's uh, Scott and I tonight. <clears throat> and our first appointment is not until 645, so we're going to move into approving the minutes and then move on to our um, board updates and some of our other new business, what we can squeeze in before 6.45, so. That makes sense. <clears throat> um, so, got our minutes from last week. Um, have a motion on those? So we change a little bit of the fee for services at the Sunderland Fire Department. Yes. And then an RDI yeah. update and some boards and committees. Yep. Great, I'll, I'll move the, accept the minutes as, as presented. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Mm. Who does that on that? <clears throat> okay. Um, and as far as, like, so going to Board of Selectmen updates. Um, the only thing I have this week is uh, thanks for everybody from who was able to come out to the Conway. It's not necessarily yes. about us, but we had a number of folks from uh, Sunderland with these Sunderland floats uh, over on the Conway, uh, parade. It was nice to see they had a good turnout and the weather held out, uh, which was nice. And, uh, a lot of people say, okay, we'll see you next year at yours. <laughs> <laughs> but it was nice. We had, uh, so Steve Kulik there and, uh, a number of other folks. It looks like people had a good time. So, and the, um, I heard it was a little dodgy bringing the bridge over the bridge. <laughs> a few pieces like were popping off, but, uh, coming back, everything worked out pretty well, so it was uh, it was nice, and, and it was also actually um, because uh, I carried the Sunland banner with Tom Z, and um, it was actually a good learning experience for us for our parade because we were kind of taking mental notes and having discussions with the, some of the Conway folks yeah. about you know what kind of issues they were having and what works, what Smart. doesn't work. So that so it was kind of a, a good extra little learning experience too. So nice that did, that did not hurt. <coughs> um, and it was, it was quite a number of, um, a lot of small little vehicles the, by the Shriners and things like that. Uh, Hornet's Nest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was a small little yeah. mini Peter Pan bus. Oh, that's and, brilliant. You know, um, but uh, it was, we, were, we were a ways back in the queue. Oh. So um, that was interesting to see. So that, that's all part of our mental notes for organizing stuff. So, it was good. So. Thanks to everybody and happy uh, birthday to Conway. Yeah, good point. So if I could, Mr. Chair, yeah. under the um, Slackman's updates, two pieces. The first is we have a Thursday morning meeting. Uh, legal counsel has been through final review of the police uh, contract that we've been negotiating since, mm. oh, November. And we hope to uh, bring to our next meeting uh, something that we can all sign. And again, it's important to bear in mind the process. The process includes not just legal review, which is at the end. I think this is the third uh, contract, so nine years now, that uh, the association, police association, as well as the town, has not brought counsel to every meeting. And we, we, we look at that as uh, exploring, exploring issues and exploring opportunities collaboratively. Um, being you know just honest about what those issues and opportunities are and uh, we we actually have wide-ranging discussions inside those negotiations and wide-ranging inside the framework of the contract so yeah. and that's really really important secondly if I could mr. chair I'd like to thank the folks who came out to uh, Friday's special town meeting we voted on a couple of different articles uh, one of which of course is the operating budget and I think it was um, a finance committee member, uh, uh, Francis, who said that the budget, the annual town budget, uh, is a reflection. That's the statement of policy, if you will, for the town. And uh, in this year, although with a couple of different iterations, the statement of policy here was, again, a very clear recognition of the costs of our education uh, and the importance the town puts on it in the form of funding. And there's not always an inherent tension there, but there is clearly uh, support 
and that support has got to extend to the broad base of the, of the larger community as well. So our, our upcoming year is going to be a much broader discussion about you know what are those priorities, how are they paid for, and all we have to do is pay attention to the news to recognize that the state is in the middle right now of discussing a compromise budget. We haven't even gotten to the state budget yet. Right. And the revenues are down. Right. The revenues are down. Spending pressures in some cases are up. And uh, that's going to be an interesting, interesting discussion for the upcoming year. I'd also like to recommend anybody who's interested, who wants to participate. <clears throat> you know, this sounds like just a, a needle stuck in a groove for everybody who remembers vinyl. <laughs> uh, boy, there's opportunity to participate. We're currently there speaking is. to FCAT <clears throat> and in an empty room. That's right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, that's an excellent point. And that's a good point that Francis brings up because it is. It's kind of your, we're putting our money where our mouth is, and here's the exactly here's right. what we think. Uh, that's a good point. <clears throat> and I think maybe, too, maybe we can look at trying to get some more information out on the web a little earlier. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can see if, if we can figure out if there's something that will be useful enough to get yep. out there yep. ahead of time, too, for people so that they can come a little more prepared with more like some more points to discuss sure. and everything because we had some good discussions um friday night too yeah i was, I was if i could <clears throat> pile onto that there was there was really well thought questions brought forward yep they were at the special yep. which was I, I thank the people who you know delve in uh to the information and come prepared yeah and, and i think it was that's exactly it too they're appointed questions as opposed to a sort of a broad general or what's up with this kind of thing so that Good was point. it was excellent <clears throat> okay um jerry got any exciting updates for us this yeah, week? uh just to make sure that everyone uh, is aware that pvta is having a hearing on july 5th at the sunderland library on proposed route changes service changes um, so that's going to be on July 5th at the Sunderland Library from 4 to 5 p.m. and again at uh, 6 to 7 p.m. And that's going to be for Route 46, Waitley, South Deerfield, Sunderland, and UMass. Possible so service changes. When you say Route 46, you're talking about a PVTA route. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sorry about that. We got a 46, we got a 47. It was yeah. like, no, I completely yeah. understand that. No, it's good. 46, correct. All right. <clears throat> okay. Um, all right. So next up on our agenda, we have a d discussion of, regarding a possible adoption of Massachusetts General Law Chapter 32B, Sections 21 to 22. And correct me if I'm if I'm <laughs> misstating anything here on this, Sherry. But as we were discussing earlier, sort of our cliff note version is this is going to allow us to essentially. Um, give notice to any of our employee groups and then try to renegotiate our medical plans and make changes to those potentially. So uh, we have notified all unions <clears throat> by certified mail um, that the board um, may t take a vote tonight to adopt those chapters and what that will allow us to do is to have the Hampshire Trust look at possible benefit yep. changes but it's just uh, the first step any um, decisions to be made would come after and negotiations with any unions okay, would follow we, that. So it's just an investigative yep, phase. Well, sort of like a research phase yep. in that sense. Yep. <clears throat> and then we had our council review it and they recommended- um, That we do adopt. Adopting it, okay. <clears throat> All right. So, so could I ask, Mr. Chair? Yeah. We have to have this advance notice. There's, there's, a, there's a series of steps for notification. It's not like you can just flip the switch and change benefits. Right. You just can't. You, it's not. We are to remind the electorate that we use the Hampshire County uh, Insurance Group and the Hampshire County Trust, and they do a lot of and have has historically done very, very well. They have, yeah. Actually. Both in keeping containing costs and extending you know, benefits to uh, staff in a, a variety of municipalities. That said, there are two tiers here. One, of course, is anybody who's negotiated, you've got to put out a notice, right. and those savings have to be shared accordingly. There's a bit of a machination there. My next question, and I guess it's toward Cherry, is, is this date sensitive? I see in the Hampshire Trust they're asking for a July meeting. Mm -hmm. they're they're, so for their July meeting. 
Yeah. Okay. So they want the boards to adopt by July 1st. Okay. Got it. So that when they go <clears throat> to their meeting, I think in mid-July, everybody will be on board and they can get going. Yeah, and then start so, doing the research. So we've got both of the budget, we've got the budget <clears throat> year coming around and they, they being administrators of a benefit, they've also got to notify a state agency. Right. Got it. Any plan changes wouldn't take place until fiscal following 19. The following year, right. right. It, it makes sense because it probably takes a while to research mm -hmm. and do all that plan work, mm -hmm. I would guess. This is kind of like the vote of <clears throat> accepting the statute. Right. Not a town meeting requirement, just the no, board. just the board. Okay. And uh, allows for the wheels of administration to turn. Just a couple of clicks in the right. game. Well, again, yep. it's important, I think, let people know that you're talking essentially a, a year in advance. Right. Before any kind of changes happen, if any changes actually happen. That's right. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, thanks for those are good questions. So, you're looking for votes? I'm looking for a motion, yeah. All right. Uh, I would move uh, to adopt MGL 32, uh, section 21 through 22. This is Mass General Law 32B, section 21 through 22. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, two to zero on the adoption. And we'll see what uh, comes out of that as we progress through our steps. All right, and next on our agenda, another adoption. <clears throat> and this one has to do with speed limits. Um, oh, yeah. This would be adopting uh, Chapter 90, Section 17C. And what this would do in a nutshell is it allows us to, and this to us gives us the option to reduce speed limits in thickly settled districts mm -hmm. if we decide to. Now, the, by adopting this, it does not mean that we're automatically going to do it in all the thickly settled districts, but it gives us that opportunity. And, and usually, of course, we always consult with the police chief, right. and we still have to have hearings and things like that about mm -hmm. it. So, um, <clears throat> actually, no, wait a minute. For this, we would not necessarily no, have to No, because town meeting piece. voted to adopt, right. so it's at the board's right. discretion. <clears throat> right. But we would still, I mean, I would still expect that we want the input of the police right. chief and a number of things. And typically, um, we would also, it's also by the impetus usually of somebody who's had some issues on their street or something, right. something along those lines. And they've asked us, hey, can you um, look at reducing the speed limits? <clears throat> and I know especially in a, a, a more, a more rural town where you don't have sidewalks, mm -hmm. it does become an issue when you've got folks who, um, a lot of areas where uh, people are out walking their dogs, taking walks and things like that. So I can mm -hmm. see where that, that can be an issue. <clears throat> and I don't know, do we have that? Let me just see, do we have that in that? I want to see if the definition of thickly settled is in that piece. Just bear with me one moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, here it is. It's a little long, but it says, how, how do you determine a thickly right. settled or business district defined, or how is it defined? And the answer is, a thickly settled or business districts are defined by the state law, Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 90, Section 1, as the territory, <laughs> I just love the writing of this, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll read it as it is first. And it's then, been through a lot already. <laughs> that's right. I feel like it's, <clears throat> hear ye, hear ye. Exactly. As territory contiguous to any way which is built up with structures devoted to business or the territory contiguous to anywhere, any way where the dwelling houses are situated at such distances as will average less than 200 feet between them for a distance of a quarter of a mile or over. So basically if you've got a bu business buildings or residences that are less than 200 feet apart for more than a quarter of a mile that would constitute a thickly settled district. Right. So then adopting this would allow us, after doing some uh, consultation, to reduce mm -hmm. a speed limit in a particularly, particular thickly settled district right. if, we, if we decided to. Um, and I, as I, th I think from reading through some of the other stuff that I saw too, typically before we'd have to do research and get speed testing and right. things like that, yeah. and it allows us to this was part of the municipal um, modernization, modernization act. I was going to say reorganization, but modernization act. So supposedly to let us move a little more efficiently and quickly and, and get things done. So, Smart. <clears throat> if I could, if I could add just a little piece of history, Mr. Yeah. Chair. So this original um, initiative came from 
citizen over on uh, the south side of the town, South Silver Lane, Plum Tree area, and uh, asked about a specific road. Right. And I give, I give the, and asking Chief about his a, official opinion on it and the adoption of a statute, of course, in this case here, requires the requires town meeting but it allows for this statute to be applied for the entire town so you're not right. carving up a bit or a piece it's not nearly as subjective right and so in this case here although the town it's a it can reinforce a town-wide uh, limit in based on the definition you'd mentioned earlier it also has to still go through a bit of a review before it gets posted, right? And so exactly. those posted so, speed limits. This isn't necessarily town wide, but I give I give the legislature credit for saying if you adopt the statute, you don't have to come back to us, right? So it doesn't have to be by district by district by by street by street by street, and that's that's very very helpful for us when to add some it agility. Is. Yeah, and it's and like you said too, it's based off of a set of criteria, Correct. not sort of a random. You know, well, we seem to have issues in this area, so let's assign it. Yeah. That. Great point. So. We do have to notify MassDOT and District 2 yeah. that the town has adopted the statute. So I, I'll have that letter drafted for you to Okay. Sign. All right. Great. Thanks so much. Uh, do we have a motion on that? Uh, move to implement the Chapter 90, Section 17C, as was adopted by town meeting. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Two to zero on that one, Sherry. Sure. I see that the Board of Health is done with their meeting and they've come on up. We held it open. Oh, right. For our results. Okay. Nice. All right. Survey brief, says? No. <laughs> <laughs> a brief recess, right? Yes. Sir. Hang out while we run upstairs. And, um, okay, let me pull up. All right, so what, uh, what's up? Good evening. Um, we are requesting a $2,500 increase in the authorized amount to be spent from the Board of Health Revolving Fund account. Um, this is for General Law Chapter 44, Section 53E. Mm -hmm. and a half. We have. Um, e. point five. Yes, yes, and a half. Um, we have a, a particular uh, um, infectious disease case of TB that needs to be monitored. Sure. Greenfield has um, secured, uh, Greenfield Public Health is able to secure partial funding. Nice. Okay. We have to put up, sure. up the phone. Sure. Yeah, right, right, right. And um, the patient is receiving services three times a week, um, and their treatment course is expected to continue through the end of the calendar year. Okay. So we requested fiscal year 18 revolving fund mm -hmm. budget, um, which is expected to absorb costs to finish the patient's, patient's treatment course. Um, in March, we requested. Uh, 2500 at that point we thought that would be enough to carry us to the mm -hmm. end of the fiscal year unfortunately yeah. sure. we're, sh we're short sure. and that's why we're here tonight is to ask for that uh, funding to fill the gap okay. between now and the end of the fiscal year and then going forward in the fiscal year um, 18 budget we would have enough to cover through the end of the calendar year okay. the end of the course of treatment you know. okay so so that particular course of treatment yeah and, okay and, um, we're looking at uh, Oh, I did an estimate. Yeah. The treatment duration, is that what? Right. And I think...
email estimate for the remainder of the fiscal year, for the remainder of the fiscal year, so for the end of 1537. Mm -hmm. And okay. that would be um, so 850. And then we do have the money for carrying forward. So right, right, right. Okay. Makes so much sense. We have uh, the estimates okay. and the bills paid. Sure. Attached. So if I could, Mr. Chair, as, as we're looking at Board of Health revolving, it's a, I want to just put a little history on it. Board of Health does great work with a revolving fund, but starting in 2009 with a high of $5,500, we left fiscal 17 with a Board of Health expense total impact on the town of $550. That's all the town appropriates for things like TB treatment, outbreaks, all kinds of things that Board of Health sees that a lot of people simply, frankly, don't oh, see, yeah. and thankfully, and more importantly, uh, the Board of Health is our agent through a health agent as well as their efforts to ensure the first defense of public health maybe outside of school nurses but you know still the first yeah. defense of public health we underestimated the cost of the, the yeah. cost of the public health yep. because of the new maintenance system yep yep so interesting we assumed okay we can now track sure all on our own because it's all computerized yep we do have our agent is maintenance trained and mm -hmm. approved yep. and that is just to um enter into a computer like uh, utilize the yeah. tracking tracking system yeah but what megan didn't or i should say um what the legislature or what the good people in boston public health <laughs> didn't have the, the thoughts of is that you really do need a pub you need a nurse right, right to monitor this and for our board of health i know that it's a mandate that we have a doctor or a nurse on a board mm -hmm. of health but it's not a it's, it's not, not a reality it's not feasible right. for the when town you get a small and we're better off um piecemealing it as we need that sure. right you know nurse or that doctor available to us i know right. when we first received the first the first tb case we thought that would be um the one and only instance we would see since we've been on the Board of Health for numerous years, mm -hmm. and unfortunately we now have another case, mm -hmm. um, and this is just yes, something exactly. that we can't plan for. Right. Um, it just, it occurs. Yeah, rightly so. Uh, uh, and you kind of tapped on something that was going through my mind when, I'm, when you're explaining the numbers, I'm thinking like, you know, do we need to maybe look at increasing funding or the likelihood of that going forwards? in any way to cover because you know you said we're down to like five hundred dollars that's all we budgeted like that. yeah it's important to bear in mind the board of health operates off of a, a revolving fund but in this case here a public health response is a shared response and the town rightly so has an obligation i mean right. rightly so take the guidance of the of the uh, board of health and act on that so again the only reason i bring up the budget question is to ensure that a lot of anybody who's watching recognizes that it wasn't that long ago we put a lot more money into this and now we ask for a lot more help and that's very different than what Board of Health is, is um, the Board of Health has historically uh, operated with, coming back and asking for transfers. It used to be a relatively rare occasion, and it's been a couple of years in a row, one through fee schedules, in this case here, simply due to response. And right. again, a response is really important to bear in mind. That's something we have an overarching obligation to fund. That's just reality. And I, I, I would say, though, um, if I know the budget, Raise it tight. Yeah. We're okay with coming to ask. Okay. okay. You know, I don't think we have a problem. We don't use the money. We don't, right. We don't spend a lot of money. Sure, sure. You know, we have one contractor, we have mm -hmm. an employee. Um, right. But, you know. That's that. So I think we can keep coming to right. ask. Okay. I consider the board to be very fiscally responsible right. and, and how we allocate the money. Yep. Yeah. Also balance that with ensuring that the public is, is well cared for. Exactly. Right. So I think the town is giving a lot for the money that sure. they're putting into that line item. Right. 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 It raises a great point. Well, again, <laughs> it's, it's, it's <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it all matters. <laughs> it, again, it's important uh, just to reiterate go. the point. You know, it's driven by a revolving fund. So it's a fee-for-service model. We hear that right. in a larger scale in other discussions, and there's an example, a very, very efficient example of a municipal service that's paid for by p fees right. 
and that administered in a very very effective way so anyway i want to just put that out there because i'm gonna it's a personal crusade i'm gonna keep every 500 bucks we have to talk about i'm gonna spend 20 minutes doing it for the rest of the year because everybody knows i talk a lot about 500 dollars. jesus sweet lord but yes we, we do a section to our agenda uh, yeah, again, I'm today is <laughs> anyway i digress but no it's, it's and i think we need to have these discussions I think, right. because a lot of times things happen we take care of them right. and do what we need to do and it, we don't necessarily get the time to discuss things right and and i know a lot of this may get forgotten when we get into our next budget cycle right. but it's important to just have the discussion. Great point. So, Thank you. Right. so the next question I put it for Mr. Chair is, yes. is, is there available resources uh, for a transfer this year? Yes. If there is. Okay. And that's certified by the accountant? Yes. Great. And I want to circle back, if I could, mm. that, that f discussion about every $500, that, that discussion is centered around all of the good things that come out of every one of those pennies that mm -hmm. everybody here spends. Yep. Agree. Not trying to be penny pinching. On the contrary, we've done that a long, long time. I, I think it comes down to the difference between being frugal and cheap. And Here you go. A big Good difference. Point. It's Good frugal point. and yep. not yep. wasting things. And it's yeah, oh yeah, exactly. oh, yeah. That's, that's totally exactly good. It, right. It's, and here we're not wasting anything. Yeah. We're getting a lot of value for our money. Right. And yeah, I you're would agree. so preaching to the choir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all of them. Oh, I already called them out. Everybody in the room. Yeah. Everybody in the room. Uh, with that said, and I appreciate all the work the Board of Health does. Uh, again, quietly every Thank week, you. every week. Uh, Moved. Always down there before us. Yeah. Uh, Moved to. Except the request of a transfer of twenty five hundred dollars uh, between accounts is called out by the accountant. So this is going to be from um, to the board of health. From hang on, not overlay. Which account are we pulling that one from? It's from the revolving fund. Uh, no, it would be no, from the revolving. The no, of source would not be the revolving fund. Yeah. It's an increase in the amount to spend mm -hmm. under the revolving fund. The board has to improve that in increase. We need to specify the from. Yeah, there it is. Though. Revolving funds. Yeah. My apologies. No, you just have yep. to approve no the trouble. increase. Yeah, yeah. The to increase. The revolving yep. To Got it. Yeah. Without Got it. board approval. Yep. Beyond that limit Brilliant. that was approved at town meeting. So again, uh, taking the recommendations, the board of health will increase twenty five hundred dollars. The expenditures from the revolving fund for FY18. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two to zero, Sherry. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank Thanks for all you do. No, Thanks. Appreciate all you do. Yep. Thanks. Have a good night. Stay dry. Your audience. Thanks. <laughs> We're working on it. Okay. All right. So, that's so why did I think? We're thinking into departmental transfer. I was thinking, yeah, exactly. So I was, I was headed to the end. I was headed right. I was headed to the end of the year. Exactly right. Right. Like, oh, I need yep. to do this. Yep. Yeah, and that that's where we've got to specifically mention right. the source yep. and the. Yep. Great point. Okay. Good little refresher for us. Hey, I had that brain freeze. I'm like, <laughs> right. wait a minute, where is it coming from again? Must be all that humidity. Coming. <clears throat> okay. So let's see. Sure. Do we have copies of the agreements for the? Sludge MOU as well as VEA? Uh, they are downstairs. Okay. I know I saw them in email, but. And are those uh, date sensitive? Only, only in that, you know, in, in motions, we tend, to, we tend to add the values as part of the motion for the record. Yeah, they're for fiscal year 18, so they okay. begin July 1st. So we can do this at our next meeting? You can. Okay, okay. great. Okay. All right, we'll do that it, then. Again, we'll historically, we've had that where we apply agency value right that, as part of the motion that makes sense and then it's in the historical record yeah. and we've so got that we'll, yeah so we'll postpone those two okay <clears throat> so then that brings us to let's see one second you want to do the appointments tonight or wait for full board or? um we could probably do the appointments tonight what do you think yeah, because we did the employee appointments yeah. last yeah, time. Last so, week, yeah. yeah. And um, just reappointments. <clears throat> so, are there multiple years here that we have to be cognizant of? Because some boards yeah. have overlapping have staggered, staggered appointments, correct? Probably in 
DC planning would be one. Planning's elected. Election. First, last, historical. If I could, Mr. Chair, yeah. uh, wait I, again, just so we don't get into trouble with some can be uh, annual yeah. and then some some can be just the one one year, yeah, some can be three years. Sure. ZBA is another one that comes to mind. I think there's multiple years there. Do we want to do you want to like put this off till next week and then take the time to segregate it yeah, by that? Maybe we'll do that. And then again, I, I'd hate to, I'd hate to yeah. go through the appointment process and have someone. Have, have one be missed that is a multi-year or one right. that is a multi-year that should be a single year because then what we can do is we, then we've got it in by the year like the, yeah. the year groupings and right. then right. I mean right. it's a long list right. so then we can maybe move it yep. by like year grouping yep, yep. Mm -hmm. makes yeah, perfect sense good. okay um, and if we even if we went through just memory and called out ones, we just still end up adding some measure of confusion. I look at something like public wares. We know those are that annual. Was, we, yeah. You know, you go through a whole. You could go through a whole bunch of them, and say they're one year, one year, one year, one year, and then get It'll to one and one, one or two. <laughs> yeah. Public wares that are done in March too. I think they are. Yeah. You know, this, yeah, the list comes forward. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's exactly right. So if if it's if it's a prerogative of the board, if I could, Mr. Chair, ask that. Again, we get the terms on here, that would be helpful. Yep, I think that'd be a nice thing to have on yeah. there. Yeah. Another column for the spreadsheet. Right. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> yeah, because then you can just. There, I just. When I pulled uh, right. it off, it just. Yeah. Yeah. You probably like hid this, hid the yeah. row. Right. And then, yep, exactly. Because I'm like, so I don't need to see that right page. now. Right now, there's 17 <laughs> other pages in the printer uh, yeah, that's yeah, just exactly. this two columns. <laughs> yep, I, I just need that. <laughs> it's just that's all I need. <laughs> and then we can. Um, and, and then you can just sort it by. Right. by the right. category right. yeah right. and then be done brilliant <clears throat> all right so that that means that that is our last official item for our agenda for tonight um which leads me to last week we did um vote on our summer schedule mm -hmm. but we will be meeting next week on 626 mm -hmm. so um no slide into it that easy okay um with any luck mr chair we should we, we may well have an agreement for the police union to bring to that meeting. That's, oh, that's the goal of coming okay. out of our Thursday meeting. Oh, that'd be nice. Okay, I'm sure they'd like to have that wrapped up yeah. as well. Yeah, exactly you know? right. So that's that's good. That, uh, the tenor of those has, has been, yeah. like you said, I think it's really good. Um, <clears throat> and we had was it four or five uh, new members brought in? For five the police. Five. Well, yeah. four four sitting and one was a training officer. Yes, that's right. So. Last time, so that was good. It was good to get to meet those guys, which was mm -hmm. nice. Um, do you uh, have a quote for this week? Or? No, actually, I did not bring one, Mr. Chair, oh, if I could. I, I missed I, that little I, moment. I, I'm okay. gonna, I will redouble my efforts <laughs> and make sure that we have them for the 26th. All right. Although I am reading uh, uh, Chernow's uh, biography of Washington. So yeah. it's a little bit. Actually, nice. Washington's a pretty quiet guy for a long, long time. He's starting to get a little more vocal now. Yep. <laughs> so there you go. I'll make sure to have a quote. All right. Nice. All right, well, um, I think that's all that we have for this week. So um, thanks for tuning in, folks. And we have a I, uh, move, motion to... I would move to adjourn, adjourn and say thanks, FCAT, for what you do. That's right. There you go. Uh, all those in favor for adjourning? Aye. Aye. Two to zero. And we're call us out at 7.06. Perfect.